boys. Historically, Bluffton has been a power in the Northwest Conference as they have the second most league championships at 14. However, it has been a while since the Pirates have won a conference title, 13 years to be exact. Our countdown to kickoff continues with the Bluffton Pirates, a team hoping to right their ship. Countdown to kickoff is brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. A year ago, Bluffton had 12 returning starters who were looking to turn heads. Unfortunately, things did not go as planned for the Pirates, suffering back-to-back -back losing seasons for the first time since 2009. I'd say the last year was uh, it was a little disappointing with how certain games, uh, you know, finished out. Uh, turnovers played a big role in it. You know, we had three games where we lost, and the key reason we lost was we couldn't hang on to the ball. We had an inexperienced line, and we weren't used to quarterbacks usually taking snaps under center because we've been in the shotgun for a couple years before this with uh, Coach Cut and everything. We had trouble with snaps and turnovers last year a lot, which we lost a lot of games because of that. Some of those games were so close, and just a few minor things could have really changed the whole outlook of the season. Jeff Richards is ready to turn things around in year three at his alma mater, but will have to do so without nine seniors, including last year's starting quarterback, Dakota Bricker, and the NWC's most consistent rusher, Caleb Jefferson. The senior back averaged 8.2 yards per carry. They'll be noticed as, as missing it here or there, but uh, we have role players who've stepped up and, and are looking to break out this season. The good thing was DeAndre Nasser, who was our fullback last year, um, he's back this year and he's put in a ton of work. Actually, the two of them worked a lot together in the offseason. He was a good mentor to look, look up to as I'm coming up through high school. So it was nice to have him ahead of me to teach me how to like do a lot of stuff with running the ball and linebacker and everything else. As the old adage goes, games are won in the trenches and with an experienced line and nine returning starters, Bluffton believes they have what it takes to continue their legacy as the winningest program in the Northwest Conference. All starts and ends up front. Um, and we emphasize that from day one, that our offensive line needed to get bigger and stronger to compete in the NWC. Bluffton's had a lot of fortune in the past with how many conference wins and championships we've had, but you know that just doesn't happen miraculously. It takes time to develop, and that's what we've been doing. This is the most dedicated group I've had in three years. Bluffton's been in a slump recently, so we're trying to get back to like what it was back in like the 90s and early 2000s when we were winning all the time, winning conference and stuff. We have the tools this year. Just looking at the conference and who we're matching up against, I think we have some great matchups. And I think with the experience we have from last year and the offense and just everybody coming back, our core of seniors, I think we can definitely have a winning season this year and definitely make the playoffs. Uh -huh. Go. Six days when they travel into Hancock County to face Corey Rawson. In the NFL, the Bengals take on the Cowboys for their second preseason game. The starter's not able to score tonight, but Jeff Driscoll and company shows them how it's done. In the third, Driscoll hits Seething Carter. He has some space, but is called out at the two, and Trey Carson takes care of the rest. The Bengals win 21 to 13. As we step off the gridiron, when we come back, the high school volleyball season begins. See action from Coldwater's annual spike off right after this quick timeout. Welcome back. It has become a tradition to start the high school volleyball season at the Coldwater Spike Off. In the past seven years, six state champions have come from this tournament. This is the 10th straight year Coldwater has held the Spike Off, and the Cavs begin their title defense with a rematch of last year's championship game. First set, Lauren Gillian with the powerful spike. Cavs knot things up at 23s. Three points later, Gillian showing she has some finesse as well. Coldwater jumps ahead 25 to 24. Then freshman Annalise Harlemer ends the match with an ace. Coldwater wins 2 to 1. The Cavs played the winner of Ottawa Glendorf in New Knoxville. Middle of the second set, Rangers flexing their muscles as Tasia Loth muscles one through. New Knoxville leads 13 to 10, but here comes OG. Taylor Alt delivering from the outside. Titans only trailing by a point, and they finish it off. Alt from the opposite side. She paints the line. OG on top 2 nothing. On the other side of the bracket, St. Henry faces Fort Loramie. Out of the gate, Emily Austin has her serve dialed in. The senior gets the ace to give the Redskins a one-point advantage. Loramie staying hot, this time behind the arm of Ava Scholitz. The freshman gives the four a 7-3 lead, but St. Henry rallies back. Ashley Seifring with authority. St. Henry wins 2-1. The Redskins take on the winner of Versailles against St. Mary's. First set, Lindsay Winter getting big 
big at the front of the net. The defending state champs with an early 6-3 lead. St. Mary's response. Claire Bertke threads one down the middle. Rough Riders drawing close, but for sales through a block party today. Winner and Liz Ording go up for the combo. Tigers win 2-0. They make it to the championship match, but OG takes the title, winning 2-1. On the pitch, Wapkaneta hosts the T-Birds of LCC. We start in the second half. Trey Horseman only has one man to beat, and he does just that. The T-Birds draw within three, but Wapak was too strong today. Kyle Linhart grabs himself a hat trick on this very goal. Wapak wins 5-1. Picking up our rackets and heading to the courts, the Lima City Girls Tennis Championships played out in eight-point pro sets. We start in the singles title match. Shawnee's a Lotus Way with a big cross-court forehand, but LCC's Olivia Kesner responds quickly. A similar shot as her forehand heads for the corner. Kesner goes on to take the singles crown 8-3. Double side, Shawnee and LCC meeting again in the championship match. Maddie Brinkman lost one over the head of her opponents. Falling for the point, Shawnee firing back though. Katie Clark playing strong up front as she puts one down. Clark and teammate Sanjana Rajasekaran win the title 8-6. LCC edges Shawnee for the overall tournament championship 28-27. And we end on the Lynx High School Golf today at Springbrook. Allen East hosting their 19 team invitational. We start with the girls on hole two. Mary Kelly Mulcahy does not have too far for par. She shoots a 79 on the day. Back on one, twin sister Erin has a long look at birdie. It veers right by just a hair. She taps in for par. The sophomore cards a 70 and is your medalist. All three Mulcahy sisters finish in the top three, leading LCC to a team title. Boy side, same hole. Ethan Harmon of Spencerville has a shot at his own birdie, but the course strikes again as the putt runs out of gas. It's a tough break. He takes the par and he also takes home the gold. Ethan, your medalist with a 69. We move to 14. Twin brother Gavin trying to steal a birdie and the putt goes down. Gavin 77 helps Spenceville lock up a team title for the Bearcats. Moving back to hole two, Lincoln Views. Ryan Moody buries the short par putt. His 73 is good enough for second. The Lincoln View boys also play second in the team standings. And Cynthia, the Reds won today 7-1 to against the Giants. The Tigers won against the Twins, but the Indians fell short 4-2. Right. Thanks so much. We'll be right back.